Right guys, do you want to break 100? We've got Matthew on camera. Hello, hello. We're going to do a little challenge today, and this is set out by the great guys and girls at uh, Shopscope. Now this video isn't sponsored by Shopscope, they have no say on the outcome of any of the ideas in this video, but what they've done with their millions of shots is they have showed me four ways that you can improve your score if you are trying to break that 100 barrier. This is based on millions of shots. This isn't cliche, this isn't just like some pro telling you to do X, Y, and Z. This is based on millions of golf shots. Now, if you wanna break 100, you need to do two of the four ideas that we talk about in this video to help you get those scores down and get that handicap down. We are gonna play like 100 shooters, Matthew, which I don't think will be too hard. No, I'm quite good at that. <laughs> First thing you want to do if you want to try and break your 100 score is you've got to try and get your drives to 200 yards. 200 yards doesn't sound much to me, but. So I'm going to hit it no further than 200 yards and play this hole, which from this tee is measuring in the region as 380 yards to 400 yards in the wind. Yep. So instantly I'm now feeling this is tough. So if you are not hitting it 200 yards, this will be one of the four ideas you want to think about trying to push to, which we'll talk about as we go, how you could do that. Um, let's just demonstrate how easy or hard it is if you are in it 200 yards, shall we? Into the wind, I'm expecting a five or six here. Instantly, I'm thinking five or six. Yeah, uh, well, I'm definitely not thinking birdie, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. that's two exceptional shots. I, like, a bogey, I think's good. Yeah, well, if you think about it, if I'm not allowed to hit it over 200 yards off the tee... Gonna have 200 yards left yeah, in. Yeah, but I'm not allowed to hit it 200 yards off the ground on my second shot. I now need to go for seven iron and down because no one's hitting a second shot further than a good drive because your next club down would be a free wood. Free wood, yeah. But if you're only hitting it 200 yards, you're hitting it in a free wood in the air very easily, are you? No. I am literally just trying to put this ball in play. Yep. Anywhere in play down there. And it is. That is centre strike. Little fairway. Again, I wouldn't mind if I was in the semi rough. You could see if you look down there, if you zoom in down there, I just, those trees would make this a long old day. Yeah. So Matt is the person who has managed to hit it over 200 yards. So we're both the 100 shooters, but he's going to hit a club that goes kind of 215 to 220. Yep. And let's see if you do gain any advantage. It's a good shot up the right, little high in play. So I've got 200 yards front, 218 flag. So I'm now going to hit an eight iron because I've hit a six iron off the tee. So I think this is fair for a pretty good, you know, fairway second shot. Uh, we'll show you the advantage Matt had in a second. You can see him as in, I wonder where you can get from there, but yeah. you're certainly... I've got 20 on you, eh? Yeah, which is what you Will want to try make and a achieve. Difference? So if you wanted to try and increase your distance, obviously that I think this is one of the hardest things for golfers to do subject to how much training they've done. Yeah. And, and to be fair, sometimes there's really easy fixes. Like I've had students who have got 20 yards of curvature and you give them a swing fix and an idea and control face and path and those kind of ideas a little bit more. And they reduce that down to like a five to 10 yard curvature and they gain distance. Yeah. So reducing how much you curve the ball. If you're someone struggling with big curvatures, getting a lesson, trying to work out where your face is, those kind of ideas would be massive for helping you reduce um, curvature and gain distance. Simple fixes or ideas, not simple fixes, but people try hitting down with drivers compared to hitting up, there's gains. There's big power leaks there. They're all power leaks, aren't they? The curvature, the angle of attack, which is basically spin loft. Yeah, absolutely. Reducing and then also strike. People don't work striking. Getting It sounds so basic and it is and hard to do, but just improving strike will allow you to get edging out more distance, um, you know, over your poorer hits and then the other big thing as well which i think is really misrepresented lots of times is just getting stronger and fitter like you've done well as a human it's good it doesn't even have to relate to your golf it will filter over onto your golf i don't think there's any harm in trying to actually make your club move physically faster by being a stronger human being yeah um, they're going to be your key points for getting longer off the tee i do think getting someone from a 180 to a 200 out of the four points, I reckon this is the higher hanging fruit. We've got lower hanging fruit to come. 
So it's so interesting now that I've taken the green out of play. Um, I'm looking so much now more about where I need to put this ball. So having a really clear idea of landing spots. So the two bunkers on the right are just going to kill me. Any of the two bunkers which I could possibly reach in the summer are going to just kill me because bunkers hurt amateur golfers. So I'm literally trying to hit it between the 70 yard gap between the green sides and just short green side to these fairway ones. I'm really very aware of where my danger is and now really plotting. Yeah. I see so many people just, you know, second shot, just whack, whack it down it there, there and yeah. hope they get away with it kind of ideas. You've got to be really smart. You know, I've got, I've got six goes, 5.76 scoring average on par fours for hundred shooters. Uh, I'm thinking five's a birdie basically, yeah. isn't it? It's gaining a lot, isn't it? Yeah. So Matt now has 189 to the front, so this really does give him a weapon by having that 20 yards extra off the tee. Yeah. I'm not saying you can all go and find 20 yards, but it's something that you might want to go on a quest for. Um, it now makes this hole in these conditions almost reachable for you, and for yeah, me it was not. I'm thinking front edge kind of stuff now with a 200 yard shot, but I'm definitely thinking the way you are, where I want this ball to be less than the danger that I want to stay away from. Yeah. Um, just to give myself a good chance of maybe an up and down and maybe getting a par, but a bogey's good, like we said. So I'm 60 yards away, and you're probably 20 yards away. Yeah. So even though I still feel like this is a game, because remember it's two of the four that you need to be punching through I would rather be in your situation more than mine over and over again good shot though very good shot and that's the thing when you get closer there's no reason why you can't be as good as anyone else from these sorts of distances correct yeah you know, you're taking power away now it's it's leveling the field isn't yeah. it yeah yeah could be Matt's 25 yards out and in the rough. So he does have the advantage here. If I put some pressure on him. So he snuck his advantage, but it's tiny. You can level this game. So basically this feels like I'm putting for an eagle. <laughs> With your handicap it will be, won't it? Oh, how did that not grab the left side? Don't raise that. Well, that's a five, so I'm under my the you, average for my shooter at gained, 200 yards. You've gained 0.78 there, haven't you? Well, I kept it out of trouble and I pitched well. Yeah. So I won, I won back over not the 200 yards. Can you take your advantage? No, other side, give you that. There is an advantage, but you can level them. Yeah. This is the low hanging fruit right here. So we're on the putting green. 100 shooters are averaging two to three free putts per 18 holes, Matt. That's a lot, isn't it? So if you were to spend some time concentrating on your pace control, if you could get that down to one free putt, maybe hitting 200 yards isn't the big push. Maybe it's this. I mean, it would be both, but let me show you what I mean got my sweet well and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim relatively just like I'm not really aiming it up at that target and I'm thinking we're around probably a dark grey button here for a good pace so it's a gimme I'll take that okay I will give myself that putt it's two putts I'm now gonna move the sweet well if you watch get close on the end here like how many degrees is that to the right now I'm aiming in the complete wrong place ten Probably. But you wouldn't be moving your face that much. No. Nope. Same grey. So I've got really pretty poor line from that distance, but it's a gimme. Take it, another two putt. And then also I'm gonna go, I mean, I'm moving that 15, 20 degrees. Like people aren't moving their putt that wildly. And I'm gonna go from the same grey marker. So I've got a consistent pace. It's actually coming even closer off a different slope. So mm. pace control is going to reduce my chances of free putting. Yep. 
I'm gonna do the same demonstration now, but with much better aim. So if we establish from the last part, that aim was pretty good. Yep. But I'm now just gonna whack it down from the top of the old sweet roll here. So my pace control is out. I get a good look at the hole. That's missable. Definitely. Hundred. But it was a more exciting you. part. Never up, never in. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Oh. And then I'm gonna get a little tentative. Let's go. So I was going from this gray. I'm now gonna go say from the yellow. So I've got a little nervous and I've gone on the next screen and I'm now down here and I'm there. Uh oh. So having really good control, say around three of these dots with pace control, mm -hmm. for lots of amateur golfers, so if you think of three of these dots is probably around one and a half mile an hour difference of pace. Yeah. Compared to having 15 to 20 yards control of the face angle of the putter on its delivery yeah. is going to reduce your amount of free putts. So how can people improve their pace control? So free balls, I'm gonna show you a little thing, a little drill you can do. You'll see lots of people on a practice screen like putting free balls down and trying to hold 10 foot after 10 foot after 10 foot, which is good. Like keep doing that if you've got that time, but you need to add pace control in there as well. This one is pace control, but it's also gonna be really getting that face dialed in. But we've already seen if you've got better pace control, I'm not saying this isn't important, it is, but maybe if that's what's lagging, like letting you down to make you free putt, getting this moving at a more consistent speed for the distance is where your gains are. So three balls, I'm gonna see how close I can get them to the fringe. I'm gonna shoot off in three different directions. So I wanna get the ball not off the green, but as close as I can to the fringe. If you come and look at this one, like, that's not a bad effort. It's close to a gimme from that distance if the hole was there. Yeah. It, it, it's literally how close without, and I don't want to go over. I'm really being precise with where I can hit that ball to from different distances, different breaks. This is downhill, left to right. This one's now downhill and right to left. Be interesting to see how he controls it because once he gets to about here, it's, it's gonna start going quicker. Oh, oh yes. he's judged that lovely. So I'm not even really aiming at a precise hole. I'm just practicing my distance because I was trying to hit anywhere in this fringe area, like one or two steps. Yep. But I mean, that, I'm, that's like career best. That's a great putt. So the last one here, it's shorter than the other two and uphill. Well, I've hit it too hard, I think. No. Oh, oh. oh it's a perfection. <laughs> yeah. So that literally like rolled up to the fringe and then it just came back. back, didn't it? Yeah, perfect part. But I mean, this is just, I see this time and time again with Bama golfers, certainly 100 shooters, pace control. You know, if you think about the way we played this hole, hit some nice shots to then go and just chuck it all away with something that maybe you're not practicing enough. Just seems like low hanging fruit waste for me. So second hole, we're all square. I'm now gonna be the 220 hitter. Go for it. And you're gonna be the 200 hitter. Yep. Good shot. Down the, the middle. Down the middle it fell. Oh yeah, down the middle yeah. right, I think. Yeah, good shot. Yeah, good shot. It's really interesting as well because you're just looking at very different... Um, like that bunker, I never look at that bunker. I'm looking at the out of bounds. I'm now not looking at the out of bounds and thinking that bunker's so perfectly placed yeah. for the 100 shooter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, just lovely. Yeah. So Matt's got 208 to the front, you can't get there. And that bunker, is it in your grill? Would you consider, will you reach that? No, I don't think I will with my club. If you not. could reach it, would you change your clubbing or would you try and get in the gap? Um, or I, you were teaching a student, the, what would you say? I would just be as close as possible, not going in and to the right of it. Okay. Um, that's what I would say, but again, it depends, doesn't it? If you're a really good bunker player and rubbish off the fairway chipping, say Rory on our videos, I'm putting him in that bunker all day long. Yeah, <laughs> well I do. The Fanula's a 200 shooter and she hits yeah. it just over 200 yards off the tee or around 200. I would ask her to aim at it. Look at yeah. the chances of going in that bunker. I reckon you could put 20 balls down here and aim at that bunker. How many are you hitting in there? Yeah, four, One, two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would just say it, you're able at that bunker for new end going in it. It's like and if it does, yeah. then aim yourself with some score, uh, some skills to get out of it. Because to lay back, it's just making it harder for her. And you're going to have miss hits short and long, aren't you? So yeah. that percentage is going to be short of the bunker anyway. From this distance, if you could get your balls in that bunker on purpose, you've got the best dispersion in the world, which means you should be definitely trying to hit it in the bigger gap, which is right of it. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> Do you see what I mean? Yeah, and like a hundred shooters are going to be hitting three woods, aren't they? Yeah. Like, again. Not hitting it in that Not dispersion. That trap, so you? you're just hitting it up there nine iron and then relying on those pitches. Nice shot. Bit up the left, but good hit. What are you doing, long ball? I'm 180 front. 180 front, you could probably make it. So I've got a 7 eye, it's downwind, I can get there. Yeah. So this is where the extra distance, again, it puts me in a position to be able to move my score on. Doesn't mean I will, because you've still got to do the other bit. Two of the four. Just a little bonky 7 iron, it should be front ish. Oh, off the, that's a perfect bounce. I think it's short though, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but it's not as short as it wouldn't have been. It would have been if it didn't get the perfect bounce. <laughs> You're about 34 yards out with a very basic pitch, but I'm putting mine or basic chip up the green. I'd much rather be you now, and this is what only a 360 or 40 yard. Yeah. It's like nothing, is it? Yeah. And mine had the potential to get on. Yeah. But again, we'll talk about the next little thing, and this gap can be closed by doing what Matt is about to do well. A little bit duffy, it's going to run on. So we'll measure that one in a second, and then we'll also measure mine, and we'll show you what I think is the next low-hanging fruit to break uh, that 100 score. So from 50 yards in, you want to it's a crude measurement, but you want to try and get your approach play to seven paces or better. Seven paces or better. Mine is five and a bit. Two, three, four, under five. Yeah, so is, seven yeah. paces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Like it's bigger than you think, but that's 50 yards in. This is less than 50 yards. So this is now a chance for both of us where I want to be getting it to two paces. Yeah. So Mark's going to do a little bump and run, I reckon, and I'll be surprised if he's outside of three paces from this distance with this type of shot. Bump it onto the front of the green, let it release out, using probably a seven iron, eight iron, and he's probably just, ooh, four, four paces, I reckon that is. Pace it out then. So it's a poor one, and I'm three. I'd be looking to get that within one that I'm disappointed with that, but obviously different standards. Yeah. And that's 50 yards in, you've got to be getting that score under those seven paces. You want to be trying to think, if you can get them in five paces. On average though, remember, yes, you correct. don't have to hit everyone inside seven, it's on average. Yes, yes. Right, we're now both putting for pars again. We're keeping the ball in play. Obviously a key factor for this. Oh, well that's still a five, which is still under your average score. It is indeed. I'm Unlucky. happy with the way I've started. Yeah. I think a really interesting point as well is that reducing your curve might allow you to keep the ball in play more as well. Yep. And one of the things you're noticing for us, obviously we're hitting inappropriate clubs these distances, so but how easy it is to keep the ball in play. Yeah. Um, Reducing that curve, which might help your distance, will definitely help you hopefully keep the ball in play more, which is where you then really start seeing that 50 yards in, getting it inside those paces can pay off. Poor read that. Good weight though, and it's a two part. Correct, it's the old weight. So let's just show you some ideas of how to get with inside those sort of seven to five paces. First little tip, this is so key for so many golfers, and this isn't the best situation, but it is the situation you can apply this. Coming over bunkers and things, you can really apply this. You don't always have to go at the pin. I've got five to seven paces. Five to seven paces of this flag left and long is off the green. Like you saw from mine. So what I'm going to do is aim out to the right of that pin. I'm in the rough as well. What happens in the rough is sometimes I can turn it a little left, so I'm reading situation into that as well so can i get it within the paces i'm going to aim out to the right i'm not really going at the flag it's a pretty average pitch and i reckon well, let's go up there and measure that so basically this one one two three four paces but if i didn't aim left one two three four paces is putting me there and very close to being in there yeah you don't always have to beeline for the hole. It's such a common mistake I see amateurs make. 
It's a great little game to play if you've got some time on a green just to get the kind of reality of the situations you might be faced when you're on the course. I want you to walk 20 paces in any direction. One, two, three, 18, 19, 20. And just drop a ball, let it lie. And now what I'm gonna try and do is hit it with inside. So from 20 paces, I, which is you know around 20 yards, I'm looking now at getting it definitely inside five, foot, uh, five yards, five steps, um, even two or three if you're feeling really good about yourself. So I'm practicing some funky lies. I'm practicing some different angles into the green. That's like one and a half paces. Happy with that. 20 paces, any direction. Hit a bunker, hit a downhill slope, hit an uphill slope, hit the rough, hit the fairway. How many times can you chip it within your amount of paces for you to get your scores break in 100? This is definitely low hanging fruit. In the comments down below, how many of you are actually doing this? So look here, Matthew, as well. I've moved to the yellow tee. We played off the whites for the others. Yeah. With the world handicap system as i understand it each course so here they got whites yellows and reds is sloped yep so basically each there's three courses in effect so playing off the appropriate tee obviously in competitions you'll be off whatever tees you're meant to play off but certainly playing off the appropriate tees is going to be key to making sure you have the most fun and making sure you're playing a course that suits your ability so greens in regulation 100 shooters are hitting about 10% of greens. That's under two greens per regulator, per in red, per 18 holes. Yeah. So let's play this hole and talk about some tricks they can do to try and up that, just a fraction to try and break one more of the four keys to shooting under 100. So I'm back now to the 200 yards. You're the slightly longer player. We're both level past. I'm a bit nervous at the last hole here now. Good shot. In play again. The importance of keeping it in play at this distance is massive. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm tangling, I'm going to panic. So how would someone try and hit like one extra green, one or two extra greens per round? So this is a good situation. We've got a bunker right and a bunker left. Quite a big opening. Yep. This is a hole that I will just go at. Yeah. There'll be no laying up. Look how much room I've got between trees on the right, trees on the left. It must be 100 yards. Yeah, I would say it's close to that. So and... I, like, there's no reason for me to just safely put, I, this is one where I'm now going to take it on. Yeah. There might be other situations where I think it's pushing me on my limit to reach the screen like that. There's no point in me trying to get it there because the, the, the danger's too much. Yeah. And I will then, I'm gonna not hit that green because I'm not trying to. Yeah. Um, Course sure management. You, yeah, well, make sure you're working in. Wind's off the left here. I'm trying to. I'm going to hit a fade, like lots of people watching this video are. No, I'm aiming at that. See that in the distance, the tree on the left, the standout little thin. The little thin thing. Yeah. I'm aiming there. That's a good 15 yards left of your target, isn't it? I mean, how I play with 100 shooters in my family. Where did you aim that one? At the pin. Well, just up there. <laughs> well, come on, like, yeah. you cut this. if I aim at this flag, there is a good chance I'm going to miss the green on the right. I'm trying to hit one more green. That's not a good strategy. Yeah. And then I will, if I can, and again, you won't always have the option at this distance, I will make sure I'm taking enough club to get to the middle back of the green sometimes, because generally and put in the comments down below you're not going to over hit an iron or an approach you're going to miss it and under hit it yep so playing an average which is a little bit longer might just allow you to sneak that one extra green you don't see many hundred shooters playing shots from behind the green back unless they re like they finned one and hit a really bad strike you wouldn't club for that no no like, i can't i'm going to try and fin this one from 50 yards <laughs> like you, just, you, you wouldn't work that into your averages so up the left with the wind, I've got as much club as I'm allowed to hit for my distance, so I still might not reach. And this is a situation where I will hit it as hard as I can, like there's plenty of room up there, attack it a bit. I'm trying to move just a bit more, keep come going, on, keep going, come keep going. On. Oh, Ooh. and he got the kick. It finished on your tree that you're aiming at. So I actually pulled that one. Yeah. If you think about it, I wanted to start it on the tree and move it, but I started it left and finished on the tree, and I can see it. I'm on the green. Yeah. You know, if I'd have aimed at the flag with that one, I'm definitely uh, 
right. Well, I'm probably going to hit the flag, but I've got an equal chance of missing right as I have left, and it's going to end up in that bunker. Mm -hmm. Like, my aim there helped me hit that green, basically. So you've got a nine, Matt. Are you going to aim accordingly? I guess you're in a little draw at the moment, aren't you? Uh, ball's above my feet, so that will straighten things out. I am trying to hit, like, a little fade with this one. So okay, so you're working in the slope, which is brilliant. It'll probably straighten it out. Wind off the left if I aim at your ball. Um, so you can aim just left of the flag, is that what you're saying? So I reckon my cut feel and wind off the left will override the slope a little bit. Okay. So listen to the conversation. Look how much he's trying to work out what might happen from the situation. That's a great shot. Ooh, oh, he's going to just sneak me at the end and get his handicap cut. <laughs> I thought I was closer than you there, like by a lot. It's interesting, we are following pattern though, the longer hitter is constantly closer. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would carry on that way. No, so. well it will mix, but yeah. I think it would average that you would be close. Yeah, yeah, average. So I'm, like, this is downhill, pace controlled for me now is everything. Have I got any? Oh yes, I have. Yes, you have. Good that job. is such a low hanging fruit, like, that is just, you've got to be able to do that with some regularity, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, um, you just see it with better players, don't you? Yeah. They're all better players that I play with, you play with, through our past golfing, like... You're not worried that they're free putting there, you're worried they might hole it. Rory, exactly, if he's yeah. in my team, I'm just thinking, please hit it the right distance. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's for the win. We're both breaking 100, mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, play enough holes, we'll probably hit it in the rubbish. Ah, uh, weak. But I'll give you it because we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> Very much. There we go, post comments down below. Does that help you with your ideas of breaking 100? I think there's a lot of these videos out there and there's so many cliche based. This is based, remember, on actual golfer's performance. It, it's given us a really good idea as more data is collected over years and years of what you are doing out there to shoot the scores you are doing and what the person who's breaking the scores that you want to break are doing and maybe where you should focus your time. Let me know if this helps.